it is a great day in Simroad, everybody. I'm B-Ron alongside Siege, and welcome to Simroad Today, second episode of this wonderful show that's not won any, any awards yet, but will in the future, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got awards coming for us, B-Ron. I've already been contacted by a few uh, award, prestigious award committees so oh, that'll that'll be that'll be for us in the future for sure yes sir prestigious committees i love that i love that but you know what i also loved the games from last night siege <laughs> oh we yeah. had some honestly great games last night some that had yeah. some crazy playoff implications and then just some some good old-fashioned upsets so let's let's get into it biron yeah yeah sure why don't you go ahead and i'll uh, take the lead on this one my friend all right well let's talk about the first game we got on our list the Originators and the AT Aliens. And I'll tell you what, B-Ron, I had the pleasure of being on call for this one. And man, was it exciting. One of these upsets we were talking about. Big game for AT Aliens. They were a game back from South, from Sim World Asia Pacific um, for that eight seed spot. They got the win tonight. Um, that just really keeps it last night. They got the win last night. I'm a yep. little mixed up. You know, um, <laughs> but yeah, they they got they got the they got the win last night, and that keeps the door open for them to potentially, if if Asia Pacific makes a makes a mistake or something, they could slip in. Um, but what what were your thoughts on that game? So honestly, I was very surprised about the outcome of that game with the way the OG has been playing all season. Really, I didn't think that this was going to be the slip up that, that the slip up that that they had. But I mean, especially because they were so hot. I think they had won like nine in a row. They were four. They were nine in a row. It was yep. something like that. It was a crazy win streak they were on. I'm like, okay, it's gonna be ten easy tonight. I was in my head. I'm thinking, yeah, it'll be fine. It was not fine. It was the opposite of fine. In fact, actually, so very surprised to see that play out that way. But look, gotta give credit where it's due. You know, AT aliens. They knew what they needed to do. They came in there in a hostile environment, got the win, and that's not an easy place to go into in the uh, advocacy no. pride compound and get a win. Especially no, against really not. you know a team again as good as the OGs are and have been all season, so yeah, absolutely. And and to speak to that, giving credit where credit's due, I mentioned this early on in the game. Demario De Duval. Now here's the thing: he has he has been known to tell people he believes he is a top caliber player. He believes he's on the level of a DJ Wagner, of a Bronny yeah. James, those kind of guys. And I think he took this matchup personally tonight. And I don't think it's a stretch to say he outplayed DJ Wagner. He had 28 points on a very efficient scoring night, four for seven from the three. He got it done tonight. So that's my takeaway from that game. Also, side note, in terms of playoff implications with that loss, Rocky Mountain Monsters are only a game out of the first seed in the Legacy Conference. So Ooh. maybe look for a little mix up there on that side Ooh, too. You yeah. don't know. But Biron, let's move on to our next one. Our next game, we want to talk about Gotham 5 and Cascadia. Gotham 5 came out with the win in a tight one, 76-72. to 72. What are your thoughts? So I've been saying it all year, and I said it before the, before the season started. I thought that Cascadia, with, with the players they lost last season coming into this one, was going to be as good. But I thought they'd make the race one. I didn't think they were going to be as bad as everybody said that they said that they were going to be. I'm glad to know that so far, the first part of that's held up at least. They're not as bad <laughs> as we thought they were going to be coming into the season. But the race one hopes are it's slipping away, looks like. And I, I, I'm not looking forward to being wrong on that one either. <laughs> yeah, I really would like to see them. And, and speaking of, I think one of the reasons they're so good, credit's got to be given to Arthur Lattimore, King Arthur, if you will. Uh, put up 26 and 7 last night on 57% shooting. It was not enough to overcome the depth and the talent on Gotham 5's roster. Mackenzie Mbako leading the way with 21 points. Um, so great game there. But moving on to the next B-Ron, we had, we had Indy Stripes and that team we talked about in the AC right now, APAC, Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific came out with the win 75 six, to 65. What are your thoughts? So look, uh, you cannot underestimate this APAC team. We've mm. talked about it throughout the year. We saw in the fir first game of the season, they beat Showtime and nobody thought they were going to do it. And they did. So I, I think that that kind of performance right there and in the game like last night, like last night where they beat Indy, who is going through their own kerfuffle right now. They're going to have a game going over there. <laughs> you um, could call it that. You could call yeah. it that. <laughs> so they were on their plates, but 
APAC came out and they're ready, ready to play. Absolutely. And uh, leading performer last night, Jacoby Reyes, 26.7 rebounds. They've got a lot of those switchblade guys. So on to the next. Let's talk about another one of the upsets we saw last night. Beyond the, Beyond the Arts took on SimWorld Africa. And SimWorld Africa came out with the win, 70 to 62. I mean, that's, that's a surprising one to me, B-Ron. Yeah, that's surprising to me too because, again, same deal with the OGs. You know, uh, Beyond the Arch playing really well as of late. They were looking really good. And then you get to the game and then they lose. And the worst part for me about that loss, matter of fact, is the fact that Coach Kusa, who, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think he's, he's known for doing a lot of trash talking. Uh, but unfortunately for him, this time it didn't work out. Because, you know, he had said last night that he wasn't concerned about about this game. And he said that, quote, our base defense is good enough. Whatever it was didn't work, uh, Coach Kusa. Nope. So I'm surprised, one, that he decided to talk some trash. And two, his team on the court wasn't able to back it up. Which, And again, in my opinion, a game that they probably should have won very easily. Given yep. everything, given how Africa's played this season, looking at that versus Beyond the Arch, you think, oh, this is a cakewalk for them. It's not, yeah. as we say, any given night. Absolutely, any given night. The parody in this league is crazy. I don't got much to say about that one, but <laughs> prop, props to SimWorld Africa. They really, they really came out and did their thing. Uh, moving on to our next one. Gulf Coast Lockdown and Lone Star Basketball. Lone Star has been on kind of a, a tough streak recently, have not looked like the team we saw early in the season. They took oh. another loss tonight, 76 for Gulf Coast, 72 for Lone Star. What do you got about this? So the worst part about this one for me is the fact that both Jace Magaz and Nene Gibson scored 20-plus points. Jace Magaz almost yeah. put a 30-piece. Nene put up 21. Magaz had 29 points. Both those kids combined – uh, weren't were, were, were 50 points total for them and you still find a way to lose the game that's crazy absolutely and for me the, the notable thing about this is what we've been seeing a lot recently when Gulf Coast is able to win games it's been two guys not named De'Aaron Cruz who have led the way for them and it's been Suno Chapa who's an aggressor a slasher has proven to be a really talented player and Akeem Young who has been a very very underrated big man since he since he joined on with that team but yeah. those two again led the way last night with a combined 26 points and 15 rebounds so i mean tough tough slide for lone star hopefully they get it together before the race to one and now yeah. b let's talk about our nightcap last night yeah a big matchup a matchup of titans that had big seeding implications in the conference best coast ballers and bay area breakers best coast ballers controlled the game wire to wire ended up with an 80 the 69 win over Bay Area. Man, I that that's a crazy crazy outcome. Still I I'm still kind of in shock over it because you expect you expect a game like that to be closer than what it actually actually was. So to see the outcome end up that way is just it's just, you know, hats off Bay Area for playing as well as they did to yeah. play best coast rather as well as they did to beat Bay Area comfortably uh, absolutely and we talk about you know race to one implications best coast after that moved up to the two spot uh in the conference and bay area dropped from the two down to the five spot um so that that's big and what i will say what what stuck out to me Lene newman 17 points on eight for nine shooting eight rebounds wow. obviously late ldo did his thing 25 6 4 sure we we expect it from him yeah he's Lene newman it. needs needs to get more recognition and I've been saying this, that the role players around LDO do not get enough credit for how good they are. Lene Newman did that against one of the most highly regarded bigs in the league in Trey Hyman. Lene Newman had a day. So I think it's time we give the best coast ballers supporting cast around LDO a little more credit. All right, but B-Ron, let's, let's move along to our next topic. Up next, we got the game of the week. Why don't you tell us about it? So our game of the week this week is between Run DMV and the OGs. That game's happening tonight. That's going to be a good one. OGs are coming off a blowout home loss against the AT Aliens. And Run DMV, 
hoping to bounce back from their last game, which, which was a loss on the road to Philadelphia, 66-58. They're, they're at home, so, I mean, it should be a good time for them to get a win in front of the home crowd. Yeah, absolutely. OG's coming off that loss last night. Um, a, a surprising loss at that. They're going to want to bounce back, kind of reassert their dominance. Also, keep that lead at the one seed over Rocky Mountain. Um, but what I will say is, run DMV. They've got, you know, Nick Hugo, superstar. Also, Brandon Smith is an underrated defender. He's a big guard. He's going to yeah. be a tough matchup for DJ Wagner. But what I will say is, I think what run DMV can take from tonight's game AT Elians are an undersized team, and they did a really good job of neutralizing Big V, Victoria Silgalskis. They, they neutralized his defensive impact, and I'm going to be looking for Run DMB to kind of try to do a similar thing tomorrow or tonight. I don't know how they'll be able to do it, and I say that because I know they have Nick Hugo there, who's a, who's a sm- much you know, smaller than Elgalskis is, and he is faster, but I just I don't... I, that's going to be a tough, tough, tough thing to figure out. We'll see. We'll see how they do it. If they can do it. I'm not saying they can't. I don't know how. Absolutely. But everyone needs to tune into that one. I would hate to be the guy who missed that game because that's going to be the talk of the water cooler. Yeah, um, absolutely. On, on Thursday. So for sure, for sure. Uh, speaking of talking, though, a lot of talk about bad boys basketball and that drama going on between. Lorenzo Phenom, Mr. Phenom, and unfortunately now former head coach Munch Williams, who was let go after the altercation he had with Mr. Phenom after our practice over the weekend. Yeah, this was this was surprising to hear. I remember hearing it from sources before it broke, and and we know there there have been talks that that Mr. Phenom, Lorenzo's father, has been a little bit of one of those helicopter parents when it comes to his kids playing sports kind of things. He's That's been very funny. involved. Very vocal. Yeah, that's a that's the that's the PC way to put it. So that's yeah. that's what we're gonna stick with here. Um, he's been very vocal about things, um, and and I think it came to blows. And beyond, there were reports were that it got very heated. There were blurs thrown by Mister Phenom. That there were obscenities hurled from both sides. Things like that. Um, because not only did Coach Munch Williams get let go. But also, Mr. Phenom has been banned from all team facilities, practices, anything like that. Um, and for me, that's kind of shocking to me that both sides kind of are being outcast. I think the team's management is kind of saying, look, it's not one of you that's the problem. They've decided it's both of them. We don't need either of them around. Yeah. So I, I, I'm sad to see Munch go. Unfortunately, he's been around, he's been around the team for a while. Good, good coach. Really hate to see him leave. But on the other side of things, I hate this for, for Zoe as well. The kid does not need any more pressure to perform anything else like that than is already on him in general. This is just more things to add to his, uh, his plate. And with him going to Michigan next season, given what, what rumors we've heard about, about Mr. Phenom, hoping that things don't continue this way. But I have nothing else nice to say. I will leave it there. <laughs> I think that's a wise choice. We'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, let's leave that there. Uh, let's move on to, to talk about some more underappreciated players. I know we spoke about over the weekend, um, but we, in, in Discord. But you know, let's continue the conversation here. Let's kind of make make it real quick. Um, I just want to run down my list here real quick, Siege, if you don't mind. Run yeah, down yours ahead. afterwards. Let's, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, so my list, my top five is Isaiah James from Beats from Beats to the East, uh, Leonidas Leonidas Pop Pop Papadopoulos from Simo Europe, Mark Chisholm from Showtime, Aiden Weaver from Bad Boys, Akeem Young from Golf Golf Coast. Did I miss one? I feel like I missed one in there. Was that, was that five? Was that a five? That was five. Believe, that was five. Yeah, that was five. <laughs> that, was that was five. five. Yeah, it was real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those are all guys that definitely do more than they get credit for. Um, guys that need a little more shine and guys that I think are going to develop really nicely. Um, to go down my list just real quick, um, you know, I posted, put out, put out a piece about it. So I know it's no secret to anyone. I do want to say my apologies to Renzo Bryant leaving him on the, <laughs> off the list. In my head, the reason, and let me tell you this, and let me tell everyone this publicly, I'll apologize publicly to me. I don't think Renzo Bryan's underrated because to me, I know that he is way better 
than his stats show. He does way more. He's one of the best, if not the best leaders that we have in this league. And I felt that it was publicly known and anyone who thought differently was crazy. Um, That's that why was he wasn't on my either. So no, that was I, my I reason agree. for leaving him off. All respect to Renzo Bryant. He is better than his stats show. He should get a little more spotlight, but that is why he got left off my list. But to run down it, my honorable mentions just real quick, Alex Rodriguez, Gabe Pope, Madison Miles, all guys very talented who don't necessarily get the shine, whether it's because the team they're on or whatever. Um, then I've got J-Mo for Sumo Latin America. I've got Theophilus Hilton, who had himself a crazy week last week, um, just going off game after game. Yeah. Jacoby Reyes, who I think is a switchblade, unreal. I Victoria Silgowski is my surprise one because as good as everyone knows he is, I still think he's underappreciated. Um, and then this is my star one. This is my spotlight one. D'Angelo Jordan. I think he is a Mackenzie Mbako type of player. He's got the build for it. He's got the talent for it. It's raw talent. He He's my guy to watch on this list. I really like that list, especially with Jordan at one. Uh, he's going to be one of those kids where, you know, if he decides to return to like show drive next season, he's going to be well, he's going to be probably the number one option. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he's going to be the engine, the engine that makes, makes that team run. Absolutely. Uh, just real, real quick on mine. Uh, Papadopoulos is one that I feel like for some of Europe could potentially also be a number one, I'll be a number one for them next season with the departure of Vekic and depending on who else they get, obviously Papadopoulos could be the number one and his, his, his leaving ability is crazy. He, and he's a good distributor too. It leads the team in assists per game. He is right now. a freak athlete coupled with, he's got a very smooth game. He's yeah. got a very smooth game, but then when he gets to the rim, there's nothing smooth about it. Yeah, it's ferocious dunker when, when, when he gets there. Don't let his size fool you. He'll throw it down on you. <laughs> <laughs> that he will. So, Biron, let's, As, let's, let's, yeah. let's get to what we're all, we all want to talk about right now. The race to one. It's yep. coming up. Coming, Seeding is man. getting a little mixed around. Those eight seeds are still up for grabs. We talked about it last week. Things have shaken up a little bit. What what are you looking at right now for the rest of the season leading up to the race to one? What do you what are you what are you looking for? So the the first thing that I'm going to be looking for is, you know, how long can the or, the originators hold on to the spot? I won't say that again, CJ. The originators, no, the originators. <laughs> how long can they hold on to that number one spot? Because you know now with with with, with the loss they took last night, they're just one game ahead now. So, you know, how long can he hold on to that spot? Will Cascadia be able to get into that number eight spot and take out bad boys with all the drama surrounding them? Maybe. Uh, will the Italians get in at, no, at number eight? And they're currently at the number nine seed right now. And, and who's going to come out on top? In the number one for the number one spot in the Legend Conference as well, because right now Southeast Select and Best Coach are tied, and like you said, the area dropped to five with that loss last night. So, yeah, I, absolutely. I think the what we've been looking at a lot has been kind of those those kind of last spots. Um, that's always intriguing. But I think I also want to think about those top spots switching up because what that's really going to affect is matchups. Because also with those last spots switching up, let's say, you know, originators do move down to the two spot. Rocky Mountain moves up. And instead of having to play a bad boys basketball or Cascadia, they got to play reigning trays. And here's the thing about reigning trays. Reigning trays, they've got Jafet Towns, who is up yeah. there with the best scorers in the league. And put Absolutely. him in the spotlight in a neutral zone where it's just hoopers hooping. Uh, he's a dangerous guy to play. But then you even think about reigning trays are only one game or half a game back from the six seed would be on the arch that could lead to a matchup originators versus beyond the arch and having to take on Tyson Simpson. So that's tough. And on the other side, similar kind of thing. Lone star basketball could drop. Yacht club is the game back from them. They could drop to seven and that one or two Southeast best coast Bay area, whoever it ends up being have to take on Lone star who has been not great recently, but, but we know that they're good. We know that they can be good, but to be honest right now, I would rather play Lone star than yacht club. And to be, to be completely honest, this might be a hot take, 
I would rather see Lone Star in the first round at this moment than see Asia Pacific in the first round. I really like Asia Pacific's roster. They're looking good recently, and I, I just think they have a really versatile roster. They're they're a scary team to me to have to play if I'm a one seed. I was gonna say I tell you what right now, if things were to hold right now as is, I would also not want to see Asia APAC in the first round either. Uh, if you're Southeast or Best Coast. I feel like either one of those teams could be upset by APAC depending on what happens that day. And that's the yeah. beauty of the race to one. It's a single elimination. So, you know, you better come to play with a bring it. If you don't, you're going home. And if the national tournament last season was any indication, it's going to get crazy and you're going to see things that you did not expect to see. At all. And that's the beauty of Race to One and that whole format. I do also want to add in here that the fall of Lone Star is something to be documented. <laughs> because oh my God. this team, this team that they, they came on really strong and they were looking like a top team all season pretty much. We didn't expect it to happen. We were expecting Bay Area to be that. Lone Star was that for the longest time. Then Bay Area came came and took that spot. But then the tumble just kept on happening for Lone Star and they're all the way down to six now I didn't think they'd be there but here we are yeah and but they same thing we talked about those other teams could still be a dangerous team Jace McGuez is another one of those guys who's a crazy scorer you don't want to see him the defensive Derek Long if they were to get it together come the race to one they're another team you really don't want to see I as it sits right now a matchup between Lone Star and H-Town feels like a dangerous matchup for H-Town to me they don't have that mm -hmm. That, that score to keep up with Jace, but again, as it sits right now, is not necessarily how it will be. So we'll just have to see how the rest of the games go this regular season. That is very true. There are a lot of teams have four, five games left. Beyond Arch has one game left. A lot, but we are getting down to the nitty gritty here in Sim World Hoops. Keep it locked here, everyone, for Sim World today for next week. Enjoy the rest of the games this week. And remember, you guys, Sim World Hoops is the only place where you can see the game and be the game. Have a good one, folks. Uh -huh.